my goodness, I am so excited for today's video. After a few months of planning and getting everything all ready, my crochet notebooks are finally ready to be released into the world. So in today's video, we are going to be going over all of the features that are inside the crochet notebooks that I created, all of the artworks that you can get for all three of them, as well as where you can purchase them. So I did put out a community post asking all of you guys what you guys wanted included in the crochet notebooks. And I really took all of that feedback I got to heart. I took all what you guys like to use when writing down and tracking all of your crochet projects, as well as what I really like to do as well. And we combine them all into what I think is a really cool tool for crocheters. Now I did make these notebooks so that you can use them for both amigurumi or other types of crochet projects. It's not just specific for one or the other. So I really hope that you enjoy using this notebook for all of your crochet creations. Now, before I actually get into the journals, I did want to have a little bit of transparency as well as a disclaimer. Now, the interior of this journal was organized and was assembled based off of what I wanted to have in my crochet journal, as well as what you guys wanted to have in a crochet journal. But I did use a template that I purchased from Etsy that is specifically for these types of purposes. I purchased the Edible Crochet Journal KDP template from All About KDP, as I said, from Etsy. So these templates are really cool because what happens is the creator of these templates, they give you the ability to then edit them inside Canva so that you can create your very own customizable journal that you can have for yourself or that you can upload to the KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing platform. So I did purchase the template and then I saw what pages I really wanted to include in my crochet journal. I did change up the font to match my brand and I added a few different elements so that it fit perfectly into what I and what you guys were picturing from a crochet journal. Again, I did want to have just a bit of transparency so you guys know if you're interested in getting into the self-publishing world and you're wanting to look at templates, I will be sure to leave all about KDP's Etsy down below. They do sell a bunch of really cool digital journals as well. So even if you don't want to self-publish a bunch of books, you can download all of their templates for your own personal use and they're really cool. Now I'm not affiliated with All About KDP on Etsy. I just really enjoyed their crochet journal template and I did want to mention that that is the base that I used to create my crochet journal. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually talk about the artwork and the covers of the journals. So the very first one is the tropical frog. Oh my goodness, look how cute. So this is actually an emote that I created for my Twitch streams. And this is a fun little emote that everybody can throw up onto the chat when I'm frogging a project or whatnot. And because I love all things tropical, it had to have that kind of tropical element to it. And so there is that artwork. I just love it. I thought it was really cute for a crochet journal. And that is how the cover turned out. The back of the journal also features that same frog as well. And yeah, I just, I really like how this one looks. I like the white border. I like the cute little rainbowish looking type of decorations in the background. Overall, this is one of my favorites. I don't know, they're all three my favorite, but I do love this one so much. The next one is the pineapple yarn artwork. Now I did create this artwork specifically for this crochet journal. I wanted to have three different options and pineapples are a giant part of my brand. <laughs> so I thought a pineapple yarn journal was the perfect addition. This one's really fun because it has these beautiful leaves on the outside. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then the back is the same artwork again. And yeah, that's the pineapple yarn version. And the last one is one that everybody seems to love, and that is the crocheting tui. This is an artwork that I made ooh, last month, the month before, I don't know, February? Yeah, in February. I did this artwork back in February, and I knew I had to put it on a crochet journal, and I just love it so much. Oh my gosh, do I love this one. I love the all green cover, and 
it's just, it's so fun. You have Tui on the back as well. And we all know that Tui loves to crochet, right? Has to. <laughs> so yeah, that is the Tui version. All three of these journals are in fact eight and a half by 11 inches and they are 200 pages each. So they are pretty large. I do personally like a larger formed notebook when it comes to tracking my crochet and that's just because the smaller ones tend to be a little harder to keep open and all of that stuff so I did think that this was a really nice size and oh my gosh I just I think there's something really nice about holding a large kind of substantial notebook in your hand it just feels so feels so nice so now that we did take a look at all three covers and talk a little bit about the size of the journal, let's go ahead and get to the good stuff and see what is inside the crochet journals. Okay, so here we have the three journals again, the Tui version, the Tropical Frog version, as well as the Pineapple Yarn version. Once again, they are eight and a half by 11 inches and 200 pages. All three covers are actually a glossy cover and I really love the glossy covers and the artwork is also featured on the back of each journal. Opening them up, the very first page does say crochet journal and it does have a place for you to put your name. It's always nice to kind of personalize your journals and things. Just make sure you're not putting too much personal information in case you lose it. <laughs> so then the next 12 pages are actually going to be monthly planners. And I did this because I do like to keep track of the projects that I am really focused on for that that month. I did leave the months blank so that you can start this journal whenever you receive it. And you do have all of the dates there with Saturday and Sunday together. A lot of times markets are over the course of two days. And so I didn't want to split them up. You have options for notes as well as your to-do list. And they're just nice pages to kind of keep track of everything you have going on for the year. They're just really nice to keep track of everything. It doesn't necessarily have to be crochet related. I don't know, you might use this as your normal planner. Moving on, we do have a hook stash section and there are a total of four pages for your hook stash. I wanted to make sure everybody had enough spots because I know a lot of people like to collect a ton of crochet hooks in all of the sizes and so Hopefully this is enough space for all of your wonderful crochet hooks. I did put the spot for your size, the brand of your hook. I did put a second number option there and you can fill that with whatever number you want, whether it be an additional hook size number or you can list the number of the hooks that you have. If you have say two of a certain hook or maybe a certain brand has a specific number for crochet hook, I just thought that would be a nice additional column to input information there. And as well as there is more info here so you can list any type of collections or if it's maybe discontinued or that sort of thing. Any other type of information you like to list with your hooks goes there. Moving on, we have pattern videos and tutorials. This is a nice place to keep track of all of your favorite tutorials and videos and things, or say some that you are interested to try in the future and you don't wanna forget about them. You write the name of the pattern, the designer, and the platform. That way you can go back and revisit them later. I also did put two pattern wish list pages. I don't know about you, but I have so many patterns on my wish list and I thought this would be a nice place for if you see a pattern that you're like, I absolutely have to have that. You can write down all of the information and then you can go back later to purchase your pattern or to keep an eye on maybe if it goes on sale or whatever else the designer kind of does. I also did two pages for a book wish list because if you're like me, you have a ton of amigurumi books or crochet books or even knitting books that you really want to get. And this is a perfect place to list all of those wants. And then you can maybe share your list with loved ones around the holidays or birthdays or things. Just a nice place to keep a list of all of those things that you love that might start getting lost in your Amazon cart or other various online carts. 
I did also include spots for your favorite books and your favorite patterns. It's just kind of nice to have that journaling aspect to your crochet journal. So you can write down your favorite books, why you love them so much. Maybe you can print out cute little pictures or things. You can do so many options with these pages. And I don't know, I just think it would be really fun to add stickers or, you know, photos of your favorite projects from your favorite books. Just a nice place to reflect on all of your favorite patterns and things. We also have the blogs and videos section for all of your favorite creators and things. And I just thought this one was really nice. That way, if you find a creator that you absolutely love, and if you're like me, you forget website addresses or you forget names a lot of the time as well. There's so many wonderful designers out there. So this is just a nice place to write down all of that information so you have it available at your fingertips if you need it. I thought this page was really fun. This is the crochet bucket list because I have a crochet bucket list. I would love to go on a crochet retreat with all of my fun online crochet friends. And who knows, maybe one day I could make something like that happen. Or you might use something as simple as, I wanna crochet a bucket hat from my crochet bucket list. Really, the options are endless with this. Just anything that you want to fill up and hopefully one day achieve when it comes to crochet. Now, if you're like me, you do enjoy gifting crochet. So I did include eight pages of the gift planner. Now, what this does is it has you write down who the gift is for, what is the occasion, what is their favorite colors, and what are their hobbies and interests. That way you can brainstorm and get that perfect crochet gift ready to make for them. I thought this was so fun. You can plan well in advance. So if you have a family member and you want to crochet them something for the holidays, but you don't know what to make for them, you can slowly start brainstorming and collecting all of this information so that when it's time to make that gift for them, you have all of the ideas ready to go. Now, a lot of you did mention that you like to journal and keep track of all of your future whips. And by doing so, you write down all of the things that you need, as well as all of the things that you need to purchase. And I thought this would be really fun to include. So here you can see the two options for our future project planner, materials required for that project, as well as what you need to physically purchase, what you don't have in in your stash, as well as any project notes that is really gonna help you prepare to get this future project onto your hook. Now there are 20 of these future project planner sheets. I thought that was a really good number to make sure that you have a lot of space to continue to plan all of those wonderful future crocheted whips throughout the year. Moving on, we have projects at a glance. I love this page because it kind of reminds me of my Trello board that I use where I can just quickly glance at it and say, okay, I have this amount of whips done or I created this amount of projects in the month. I did include 12 of these pages so you could use one every month of the year and you have the number of the project, you have the name, when you started and when you finished. There's not a lot of information for more detailed stuff, that's gonna come later, but it's just a really fun page to just glance at and you can say, okay, I have that bear amigurumi that I am making and I started it two weeks ago and I want it finished by this time or I finished it by this time. At the end of the month, you can say, okay, I finished out the month of April and I crocheted 10 crocheted items throughout the month. It's just a really fun and simple page to keep track of everything that you're working on throughout the year which leads us to the remainder bulk of the journal, which is the current whip pages. Now there are gonna be 33 whips that you can write down in this crochet notebook. I am debating just releasing a crocheted journal that has just these pages in them. That way you can continue on throughout the year. If you're like me, you make way more than 33 projects, but let me know if that is something you guys are interested in. But here's how 
how the current WIP pages are set up, you have your project name and info. And I didn't add a ton of information to this box because everybody is so different and you like to keep track of different things. I did include a start date and an end date to help you keep track of how long your project took, your yarn and materials needed, hooks and tools, as well as project milestones. I thought this would be really fun. Say you're making a cardigan, you can write down after one week, one sleeve done. And I also thought these check boxes were really nice. Say this is a commission that you're working on or you have a deadline to finish this project, you can maybe add dates of when you need things to be done and complete and you can mark them off as you get there. Really the possibilities are so endless with this section here. I did also add the pattern pictures and the finished item picture. So you can put a picture of what the item is supposed to look like and what yours finished out to be or any other type of pattern picture that you find is important to put there, you can stick it there. Now there are three pages of notes for every single whip page. The first one is just this blank gray square and that's just nice. You can sketch on there, you can bullet journal, you can add stickers, you can add whatever you want. You are not confined to any type of lines and you can really be free to just jot down whatever it is you need to. The next page does have the more traditional lines so you can keep track of whatever information you need with those. And then the third page is kind of a hybrid between the two and you do have the lined information there and these empty boxes so you can add pictures or do sketches or you can add samples of the yarn or that sort of thing. However you want to use this is completely up to you. This is your crochet journal. These are your creations you do what you need to do. But again, there are 33 of these current whip pages. So again, you start off with the current whip, you have one note page, two note pages and three note pages, and then you start all over again. And that does go all the way into the end. Now, because of the amount of pages that this journal has, the last crochet project actually only has the two note pages, but there is this empty page on the back that is intentionally left blank. So you do get that third note page. It just doesn't have anything printed on it. And there we have it. Those are the crochet journals. So let me know what you think of them. Let me know what you're excited about and what you would like to see in all of the future crochet notebooks as well. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that the crochet journal covers are actually different than the notes cover. I do have this one available now in my website. Uh, so if you guys are interested, that one is also available. But as you can see, each of the covers are different. This one has the green with the leaves, whereas this one has a fun little kind of salmon-y color with a fun little kind of pattern there. This is the tropical frog version. So this one you can see has a bunch of flowers on the background, whereas this one has the type of doodly rainbow looking things. And then here's the difference between the Tui one. So this one is the green background, whereas this one has kind of like a stitch pattern on it, uh, but then also does have the white background. So all of these six by nine notebooks are available as well. And these are just bullet type of notebooks. So these are good for any type of everyday note that you need to be taking. It is not necessarily just crochet, uh, but yeah, I did want to show you the difference between all of those. So there we have it. There are our crochet journals. Oh my goodness. I love them. I think they are so wonderful and I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on them. But you're probably asking, okay, Sonnet, where do I get one? And there's actually a couple of options. So the first one is you can order it from my website, which is thesonnetsilence.com. I do have a limited supply physically with me. Do keep in mind though, that I do only ship to the United States, but if you are international, don't worry because there is an even easier option out there than ordering it through my website and that's 
ordering it from Amazon. Yes, my crochet journals are available on Amazon and they are available in many, many Amazon markets. So if you are in Canada or if you're over there in the UK or you are somewhere else in the world, there is a pretty good chance you will be able to get your crochet journal as well. I will be leaving the US link to the Amazon page down below, but then you can use that to see if it is available in your country through Amazon. So the notebooks do retail for 15 US dollars on both my website and on Amazon. What's really cool though, is if you do have Amazon Prime, you should be getting it within a couple of days, which is really exciting. Also on Amazon, you will find all of my coloring books that I have published as well as my notebooks that do have my artwork on them as well. So be sure to check out all of the other offerings if you are interested in other various notebooks and things. But that's all I have to say about that. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me and taking a look at these awesome crochet notebooks. If you do purchase one, please let me know what you think down in the comments and feel free to give me any type of recommendations that you would like to see in upcoming variations of crochet journals. These are not gonna be the only ones that I put out. I do plan to put out a lot more options with new artwork and things. So I will happily take all of your recommendations and suggestions into account but I love you so much. You are so wonderful. I hope you are having a fantastic springtime and I will see you all a little later. Bye.